Hi guys, in this video we're going to be discussing why building and selling AI workflows like workflows built on N8N or make.com is not actually a sustainable business model and you probably have noticed by now that it's becoming more and more commoditized and it's really hard to compete in that area and what would be actually a better alternative for a more sustainable business model. If you're here for the first time, my name is Sirop. I build an AI development agency and over the past six months to a year, I've been selling AI workflows and AI automations for small to mid-sized companies. And I try to share my experience here on YouTube. And I try to be very transparent about what actually working in real market and what is actually not working. I try to show both sides of AI, the good and the bad. And I try to be very honest in my approach and you have been enjoying this so far. So if you're here for the first time, I would appreciate if you can subscribe to be notified with future videos and maybe leave a comment in this video as well. I try to read all the comments and answer any questions that you have. So without further ado, let's dive in our discussion. So recently I've seen this video where somebody was explaining how you should stop selling AI agents and move actually to more a system approach to sell AI systems rather than selling AI agents. That video got super successful and I saw other AI influencers starting to build such a thing. If you haven't seen this video, maybe try to check uh, one of these videos. I'll try maybe to link them as well somewhere so you can find what I'm trying to reference to. But in a nutshell, these people are saying rather than selling AI automation workflows like an N8N workflow workflow that does a specific job, could be a chatbot, could be a lead gen or something like that. Try to sell actually an a entire system. So try to build a front end, a back end, and they're trying to sell it as like you can build a front end using maybe Lovable or actually like an AI code that can create an app for you. And then you can package it all in as a one-time system and then offer it as a maybe a service or even a SaaS. This could be a completely valid way if you identified a problem that you're trying to solve and you don't want to build a custom thing for each client, but actually build this thing, which is a SaaS. I mean, this is not a new idea, right? This is purely SaaS business. So these people are not being so original and it's not like something that nobody have thought about before. It's been there for like 30 years now. So yeah, you can build a SaaS and you can try to sell the SaaS. So building the SaaS is not the problem. Is right now, I keep saying this YouTube channel is that the distribution is always has been the problem. But now what actually bothers me in these videos is that people are saying that you can now build rather than just a simple workflow, which people notice, okay, it's very easy to build such an n it n workflow and you can... Uh, maybe copy it and paste it to multiple clients, change some configurations, and then you can sell these. Now the new argument is that you can now build a full SaaS platform by yourself and then sell this as a service. And I think this is a little bit ridiculous because I work with these tools like Lovable, Replit, all these vibe coding tools that people can use to actually build apps. It is possible to maybe build a small MVP or a proof of concept or a, or a small demo to show somebody, but to have a scale that is actually you're going to be selling to actual customers, especially B2B, who have needs and have traffic or have real world data sets, I just think is unrealistic, especially if you don't have a technical skills. If you're a technical guy and you know coding and you're using these tools to just create something quicker, it's totally valid. You can definitely do that. But then you're going to be lacking the distribution skills and the marketing and sales to actually advertise it. So you need the both sides. You need the, the side of the selling and you need the side of development to be able to go into that business model and build these systems, whether it's a dashboard, um, whether it's like a full stack application. It is very difficult, guys, to build this from scratch if you don't have technical skills. And believe me, I have technical skills and I still sometimes struggle with all the aspects of it and understand like the data sets and keeping the data secure and keeping the apps able to handle the amount of traffic that it's receiving. Um, if you don't believe me, maybe also try and ask people who work with Airtable, for example, because sometimes Airtable is an easy way to build a user interface. It is a database, but you can also add some maybe forms that you can click for your clients. Uh, I actually really like it. It's very pretty and the clients really enjoy working with it. So you don't need to code everything yourself. But then the scalability, sometimes the Airtable start to becoming really slow and then you notice people start to get frustrated. So, okay, how can you build a sustainable business that would run maybe a year or two to be able to generate enough clients and get referrals. And if you have been trying to sell anything, you know how hard it is to get new clients. And the most of your work is gonna be coming from maybe referrals or upselling things to clients you already 
paid a lot of money to acquire, whether it's with marketing, whether it's with your time uh, or referrals or communities or going to conferences, whatever strategy you're doing to get clients is going to cost you money, whether it's in your time or actual physical money. So you would notice that, yeah, like the best way to have a sustainable business is to have a couple of big clients that have a lot of needs and you can always service these needs, sell them different things or help them solve different problems. That's the only way that I see right now to have a very sustainable business model that goes over one to two years. So the argument of being able to build a SaaS without having technical skills, I think is something a little bit misleading for people. And sure, I'm sure you can build a demo and show it to somebody and say like, hey, I can now sell you this thing. And probably would you be, you would be able to get one or two people or clients until the moment where you are able to hire some developers to maintain the software if you're not technical. If you're technical, then you need to at least try to sell this, distribute it. It's a different kind of problem. So what I actually see that actually works if you don't want to build a full uh, SaaS product, because I think the distribution of the software is now the problem and it's not the building of the anything workflows or whatever. So this is going to be definitely your struggle. And especially if you're coming from a background that you don't have enough business problems or you haven't encountered these business problems in very specific niches, then you won't be able to build a SaaS, let alone a net end workflow that can solve this problem. So I think you notice by now that copying and pasting AI workflows is just not going to be as valuable because first of all, the business owners are being educated on the how you are acquiring these things. And second of all, solving problems has never been as easy as copying copying something and tweaking it for another business. Like each business has different needs, has different tools, has different integrations, have different uh, parameters. So it's very few cases that I've seen, especially when you go to a little bit bigger businesses. Maybe for small businesses, you can find businesses that pay you maybe 2000 Even 2000 could be a little bit difficult thing to ask for, for something that you maybe copy and paste. But Again, the problem is not copying and pasting the, the workflow, it's actually finding a problem that is so replicable over multiple businesses. And I think this problem, if you can manage to solve it, then whether you solve it with a workflow or whether you solve it with a SaaS, it's the same thing. Then it, it is quite valuable to be able to replicate. But now, like, what do I actually see working? When, when we talk about systems, when we talk about like build a system for somebody, I think at least from my experience right now, what has been working so far is not building a end at end workflow. It could be you can build it with Python. You can build it with whatever tool that is scalable enough to handle that client's data and be able to solve their problem. And basically what the client wants, the clients want partners. The client wants somebody that can rely on to solve their problem. Let me give you maybe a very concrete example. One client hired us recently to manage their marketing campaign. One of the use cases that you keep hearing about on YouTube is lead reactivation. That means this client has a bunch of customers that are lying there and right now their sales team is going manually for each customer, trying to send them some messages, trying to get more value out of these customers, which they already acquired through multiple marketing uh, acquisition strategies and years of doing business. And as I told you in the beginning of this video, marketing to previous customers is so much easier than acquiring new customers. It's always less costly to trying to get or sell them, upsell them on different things, whether you uh, sell bigger quantities of the same thing or whether you can sell them cross different cross products. Like if somebody bought meat, for example, the cross product, you would also sell them complimentary wine. Like this is a, a very simple example in food, but you can think of it of very similar ways. Also on Amazon, you can see people bought these items together. So these kind of stuff, these kind of offers are very important that you can sell to your clients. And then hopefully you can do generate more business from this client that you already, they already love you. They already work with you. So these clients hired us to do exactly the same thing, understand their data, and then trying to market whatever these people have bought with them in the past and trying to get and generate them more business. And from a business perspective, they are not looking for somebody who has a anything workflow that maybe does some leads and then generates some emails. This is basically what we did, which was like 10% of the work, going, understanding what the clients bought in the past, generating them a nice, very personal email and letting the people and their salespeople 
basically just approve these messages. So we keep the humans in control. So the strategy was simple, but the clients wanted us to handle everything. So my, my point is when you're trying to sell systems, like let's say an outreach system or a lead activation system, when people show you like the NNN workflow, like, oh, this NNN workflow, can you replace your entire marketing team or all this crap that I keep seeing online? This doesn't work in real life, guys. Like, I'm really sorry to be now associated with this negative guy that who's keep talking about AI in a negative lens. But I believe that these things just don't really work because what actually work is somebody who very close to the business understand what the business need and then trying to have full ownership over the product and the output and the results and then build a system that works. So we did end up building a front end for the salespeople to interact um, because the salespeople needed to get the data. The data was in a very specific CRM. So you needed also to integrate with the CRM, which took a long time and a lot of effort. And you need, we needed to know like authentication, security. That's the thing that I keep saying that is not as easy on a workflow. Like the actual email generation, yes, it was maybe three different nodes in any time. But everything around it, this is what took around three weeks of building, understanding their data set, understanding how to target these people, how to generate the, the results, how to track everything, how to let their employees use our system in an easy way. So we had to do some interviews with their um, employees to understand how they are working right now, what would be a possible solution for them, how they would like to interact with the system. You are basically, as an AI agency or any the software development agency, you need to think yourself as the partner or like an employee trying to help this company achieve its goal. Once you start thinking from this lens, you start of thinking of systems that is very well integrated within the ecosystem of your client. Because let's say you are working with specific tools, your clients is not ready to migrate everything that they've done to all your new tool sets, just so they can fit your needs. So you need to actually understand what are they working with in terms of tools, CRMs, and try to integrate your solution with them. And this is what I mean by don't focus on building an it end workflows and selling those, but think about systems. So a system, yes, it has some front end, doesn't have to be lovable, could be Airtable, but something that basically the users can interact with. And then this whole system is then integrated within your customer's ecosystem. So this is what I see work, and this is what you can charge 5K and plus to be built because it takes some time to build it. It takes about maybe two, three weeks, depending on how many developers you have. It took us a little bit longer because there was a lot of back and forward communication with their IT team to understand um, they needed to build some stuff. They needed, we needed to connect with the CRM. So things take a little bit longer, but for something like that, you can charge around 5K. And it's never as easy as just copy this workflow and sell it for 2K. Of course, barrier to entry is super low. Of course, it's gonna get commoditized. Of course, people kind of notice it has no value because it's not solving my exact business problem. And that's why I want you to see it from this lens, the lens of, okay, maybe I can save up my work by 20, 50%. If there's already the workflow that does something similar, maybe like the email generation part is gonna be very similar from one client to another. And also the tool set. So let's say you have a specific outreach tool that you've used in the past and now you can reuse again because you know how to integrate with their API. So this knowledge doesn't change and this knowledge save you time. So you don't have to learn it every time. But stuff that like copy and paste, I don't think this is the value that you can add to the business. And I really encourage you, especially if you're starting your business, you need to be not focused on the tools and the AI and the technology, but be more focused on the business. Like how can this help this business achieve its goal? Once you start seeing it from their perspective, you start to sell your services much easier. With this, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope also I was concrete with the example that I gave of what I think you should be able Able to sell in the future. If you still by any chance have any questions that something was not clear, mention it in the comments. I try to answer all the questions that are in the comments. I heard you that some of you were asking to start a premium community on school. So I am considering starting that. I just need to find a way to fit it within my schedule, but um, I will try to find a way to do this community and I would love to be able to interact with you more on one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, whether it's in this community or in another way. So thank you so much for listening to this video and I'll see you in the next one.